teach that class again. So I said, I'm going to teach that class a little bit of what I said, and I'm going to add some new stuff to it. So today, I'm going to go over closing and self techniques. I'm going to go over a few things. First is closing and self techniques. Everything that I have learned in this business, in my past business, that was in the car business, and everything I have learned in the banking business, I'm going to share it with you all, okay? Um, I'm going to go over my personal story, the personal story that I give to my clients. Um, one of the most important things in this business is to have a personal story. Without a personal story, you're not going to build credibility for yourself with your clients. I'm going to go over presentations on how I get into presentation of closing a policy. And I'm going to go over how I close policies without asking questions. Um, a lot of us, when he gets to the closing part, um, we ask questions. We say, so are, 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 you, are, are, are you ready to sign? Is that it? Yeah. Um, I'm going to teach you how to not do that, how to not mumble, how to not ask questions to close. And last but not least, I'm going to teach you how to overcome objections. Um, one of the biggest things in this business, especially as new agents, you're going to hear a lot of objections until you get better as an insurance agent and you have uh, a much more confidence to close. Um, I'm going to teach you how to overcome objections by consequence questions so that you can raise up the emotion and after you raise up the emotion, you can close the deal. So, I want to start with giving you some rules of closing, okay? I numbered it down. Um, how many numbers is it? So be ready to write, because it's 21 closing rules. So, number one is say it, sell it in terms of what the customer wants, needs, and understands, not in terms of what you got to offer, okay? Um, some, some, maybe, maybe your client, if, if your client is buying a life insurance policy from you, okay? Maybe your client is buying a life insurance policy because they want to build up a cash value for their children. They want to build up a cash value for their retirement years, okay? You sell it based on the needs, okay? Now, life insurance policy, if you go on the website of the company, it has 40 pages for you to, for you, it, it has 40 pages for you to learn about life insurance policies. Are you gonna explain 40 pages about these policies to the clients? No, you're gonna explain what they need and the disclosures so that you don't get into trouble as an insurance agent for your license. So, say it, sell it based on what they need, what they want. If they say, I want the life insurance policy based on the cash value for my retirement years, then you, you, you pinpoint, you sell the benefits on the cash value for the retirement years. You don't talk about um, kids benefiting for the cash value. You don't talk about the death benefit. You don't talk about the probate. You say it very quick, but then, what you want to pinpoint on is the cash value, okay? Um, ask them three, usually when I sit with my clients, especially when they're buying, when they're buying big policies, whether it's a life insurance, it's a long-term care, or so on and so forth, I ask them, tell me three things on why you need this policy, okay? Tell me three things that you need a life insurance. Give me three reasons why this life insurance is gonna save your life. And let them tell you, let them close themselves themselves, rather than for you to close them, okay? When they say, I want life insurance policy because it's probate free, it's tax free death benefit and it's gonna build cash value, guess what you're gonna talk about when you start selling the benefits of the policy? You're gonna talk about probate free, cash value and tax free death benefit, okay? Uh, second rule is gather personal information. Guys, we do a warm up for a reason. We don't do a warm up because we just want to warm them up. But we do a warm up because, yes? Can you say that one more time? You're speaking really fast. Gather personal information. Say that one more time. No. Gather personal information. I'm going to go over it really fast because I got a lot of information. But if you guys have to stop me to ask me questions, please do. Gather personal information. Uh, when you do the warm up, you're not doing a warm up for just to warm them up. Okay, you're doing a warm-up to gather personal information, to direct them into what policy you want to sell, okay? You ask certain questions to understand where they're coming from. You ask certain questions to see if, it's their, if, it's, if a, a long-term care is within their need, if a life insurance is within their need, okay? And the questions that you want to ask is, how long have you been living over here? 
You won't know how long they've been living in that house. The reason why is because when when their spouse dies, you want to make sure that you leave enough life insurance for your spouse so that they can pay off the house. Okay? You see what I'm saying? You direct them to what you want to. So you have to ask them the questions in the warm-up where not only it's a warm-up that they warm up to you, but then it's also a lot of tips for you to get for you to gather around when it comes to your uh, presentations and closings. Number three is build relationship. People want to buy from friends and not salesmen. Okay? You cannot if if they say no to you, that's because you're selling. Okay? You need to build a relationship with them. Okay? You need to be a friend. Can you go to your best friend and say you want a life insurance and they say no to you? Very little chance. Very little chance. But what happens if you go to someone in front of your house and say, Do you want to buy life insurance from me? from me high, a much higher chance that they would say no to you okay so what you have to do is to build a relationship I always tell my agents I say a warm-up should be done at least 30 to 45 minutes at least at least 30 minutes okay if it's not less if it's less than 30 minutes you're probably not getting a sale in the house okay if your warm-up goes to an hour if it goes to two hours if it goes to three hours Beautiful. You're writing a policy in that house. If you go to a client's house that they're talkers, let them talk. Let them close themselves. Okay? By the time they're done after three hours by talking, they, they're, they're closing themselves. I promise you. Okay? But if you want to jump right, in, right straight into, the, into selling, you become a salesman, not a friend. Okay? Number five, establish common ground. Um, relationship... <coughs> Yes. Well, it's okay. There is no build fork. a relationship. <laughs> that, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Build relationship. Three, oh, I, 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 you know what? I skipped four. I know. I said there is no four. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, build a relationship that no salesman can compete with you. Um, one of the most jobs in this nation is a salesman. Okay. The most jobs that there is in this nation is to be a salesman. Everywhere you go, they will hire you as a salesman. Okay? Which means you will have a huge competition. You have a huge competition out there. Okay? You want to make sure that you build enough relationship where they will only stay with you. You ever how many how many of you guys get on the phones to make calls? Okay. Okay, very well. So you all have experienced um, people answering the phone and they say, I got all I need. Yeah. <laughs> right? Why do you think they say that? Is it because they got all they need or because they have such a good relationship with their financial advisors or their insurance agents? Okay? They got all they need because their insurance agent is all they need. Okay? You ever call the clients where they had a life insurance policy and they said, yeah, come to my house and review that policy for me. That's because they don't have a good relationship with their insurance agents, okay? That's because the insurance agent has not built a good relationship, and now he's about to compete with someone better than them, okay? And you are going to be the one who's better than them, okay? But on the other hand, you need to establish such a good relationship with your clients where they do not cancel policies on you. I went to a client's house yesterday, um, and these people had policies for four years, and the last time they saw, they actually sat down with their insurance agent to talk about their current life insurance was four years ago. Four years ago, their insurance agent touched base with them to go over their policies. Guess what I did? I switched all the policies over to bankers. And I gave them a discount. I gave them about $30,000 of, um, of higher benefits and for the same price. But if, there, if the insurance agent was built a good amount of relationship, then price wouldn't have mattered for them. Okay? So, and even any company that you go to, all the other companies are going to beat your price. But the only way you can protect that, the only way you can prevent that is for, is for you to build enough relationship with your clients. You want to call them. When you write a policy for them, you want to call them the day after, say, Mrs. Jones, I'm submitting your policy today. When your policy gets issued, 
You want to call them. You say, Mrs. Jones, congratulations, your policy has been issued. It's in my hands. When can we set it up so that I can come by? When you go to their house, go to their house with a, with a gift. Buy a $10 gift. Buy a pastry. Buy something sweet from Ralph's from somewhere. Okay? That builds a, that builds a relationship. Okay? When you, when you write the policy, you're gone. They're your clients. Call them a month after. Ask them how you're doing. During your warm-up, okay, highlight those, those things that they say that are most important to them. If they say, yes, my son is going to college, call them a month after and say, how's your son doing with his college? How's he doing? Does he need any help? I'm in the insurance business. Does he, does he need a job? Do you want me to help you with anything? Do you need anything? When I, when I talk to my clients, I say, you can literally call me, okay, from anything. From calling me to say, Ali, I'm craving some Chinese food, bring me some Chinese food. To calling me and say, Ali, I got some questions about my life insurance, come to my house. And I tell them, I say, if you want to do business with a typical insurance agent, I'm definitely not the one and I'm not going to do a policy for you. But if you want me to be a part of your life, look at me as a friend or as your son, then you can definitely rely on me. That builds a relationship. That builds a credibility. That builds a relationship to the point where an insurance agent calls them and they say, I got all I need because I'm all they need. So, number five, establish common ground. Um, relationship means relating to people. Okay? Understand the, 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 the meaning, the definition of a relationship. Relationship means relating to one another. Okay? You do not get into a relationship with someone that you're not related to. Is that right? Okay. Same thing with your clients. They will not buy an insurance from you. They will not do business with you if they don't feel related to you. During out their warm-up, during out your warm-up, when you understand when they're when when you when they tell you something, let's say if they say I play golf, okay, and you like playing golf, tell them I love playing golf. Tell them you know what? Let's go to golf next time. Okay? They say, you know what, I like cheesecake. X, I love cheesecake too. I'm gonna bring some cheesecake next time, and I'm gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna have some we're gonna have some cheesecake together with some coffee. I'm gonna bring some coffee too from Starbucks. Okay, you 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 relate to them in everything they say. Okay, you do not relate to them, you do not sell. That's how easy it is. Number si number six, gain confidence. As brand new agents. We tend to mumble a lot when we go to the client's house, especially when it comes to closing. You have done everything perfect. You have done all your warm-up perfect. And as soon as it comes to the closing, you stop mumbling. Okay, can I get your signature over here? Guys, people feed off from your confidence. If you don't have confidence, they will not buy from you. They won't buy from you. People feed off from your confidence. When you have confidence, people cannot look at your look into your eyes and say no to you. Okay? Have a strong tone of voice. Your confidence is so much within your tone of voice. Do, do I look like I have confidence in my tone of voice right now? No? You're wrong, man. <laughs> See? This is the kind of this is the kind of confidence that you need to have in your tone of voice, okay? If I didn't have confidence standing up over here, none of you would have been taking notes. The same thing in the house. If you don't have tone, if you don't have confidence in your tone of voice, they're not going to buy from you. It's as easy as that, guys. Thirty-eight percent of your impact that you put in the sales in the client's house is your tone of voice. Thirty-eight percent of your closing ratio comes from your tone of voice. 55% of your closing ratio comes from your body language and 7% comes from the words that you use. You all think that you gotta big you gotta use big words to close policies. That's not it. That only has to do with 7% of the impact that you put in the house. 90 some 93% of the impact that you put in the client's house is your confidence, your body language, and your tone of voice. You have those two, you have those three, you're going to close nine out of ten. How amazing is that? Nine out of ten closing ratio. So, your tone of voice needs to be calm.